See, my wife said one time, she was praying and she said, Lord, I'm just, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I'm going to tell you what I want my husband to be like. And she said, I got a piece of paper and I started writing down. And she said, I wrote down 51 things that I want my husband to be. And she told me that one day and I was like, wow, I wonder if, you know, I'm at least 25 or 30. And one night we were at her house and she said, Joe, come here, you're not going to believe this. I found the list. And I said, girl, are you serious? I said, let's read it. And she opened it up. And guess what I was? 51 out of 51. She said, it went down. She said, the first one was, he needs to be over six foot, dark hair, needs to be a preacher, had played a pro sport, drives a Dodge truck, random. I drove a Dodge truck back then. And it was just like everything that she had the list. And it was some, some little crazy things. Doesn't need to be an only child. And when it went all the way down the list, she said, you're 51 for 51. And I said, you know, the Lord knew because I think I had a list too. And she said, oh, it was. And I said, loves God with all her heart. heart. She's hot and loves God and, and loves ministry. This is crazy. And was a cheerleader. Actually, I put head cheerleader. And, and I don't know why. This is kind of what I wanted. And that's what I got exactly what I wanted and, and the thing is my wife and I and I'm, I'm not saying that you need to make a list of 51 things but you need to have a standard and you need to know what you want we've had young girls at our house that said well this is what I want my man to be like and they'll, they'll name somebody and then a week later they'll bring old dude over and I'm like this guy's like the opposite of what you said girl you're desperate don't you can get on a dating site and do better you know um but what I want to know is this, you know, we set ourselves apart for three years for two reasons. One, we wanted to, to, you know, be set apart for the Lord. But we said we've messed up in our past and, and we've dated and we've done a lot of things. But we want our heart to be totally consecrated to the Lord, to be so in love with the Lord. And we, we set a foundation for our life. I remember nights that I would go and I would just spend time with the Lord in the sanctuary of the church that I worked at. And, you know, like I said earlier, people laugh at the standard that we set you know a lot of those guys they're not even in ministry anymore they've messed up they've done crazy things but my wife and I set a standard and when I'm 88 years old and I'm preaching I can still preach that standard and I'm going to challenge a lot of you today to get a standard and to write it down and to hold it you know I like to call this a second generational virgin but you know if you're having premarital sex and you're fornicating and stuff you can say today's the day that I'm setting myself apart to the things of the Lord. Write the date down, because here's the hardest thing. Before you get married, this always happens. Baby, do you love me? And the guy's like, yeah, girl, that's why I ask you to marry me. Are you a virgin? No. But on this day, Pastor Joe was preaching and said, who wants to re rededicate their life to be a second generation virgin? And four years ago, I made a commitment that I would never have sex again until our, the wedding night and you know you might think that's crazy I've had people say thank you thank you for saying that and he said because it just opened my mind that from whatever I've done in the past see, a lot of people when you give your life to the Lord you look at your past but some things you don't erase you can start all over you can start afresh and you know what I really thought was so attractive about my wife is is her standard she held and I'll say this I respect my wife more than any person on the face of this earth. And usually people say, well, my, my role model and the person I respect the most is Billy Graham. You don't know Billy? And, but the thing is, I see my wife every day. She is the best wife. She is, is the best mother. And in the morning, you hear she's praying in the Spirit. She's walking through the house. And I mean, if our kids stump a toe, this woman's yanking them up, praying over them before the toe even hurts. You know, my wife is always reading the Word. She's always reading Christian books. She's always on the phone praying with somebody. She's always seeking the face of the Lord. And I'm always like, I told her, I said, girl, you're just amazing. And I said, where did you just learn all of this from your mom? And she said, well, yes, but I set myself apart and I've never changed. Just because I got married, I'm still set apart for the things of the Lord. And you know, it says this in 1 Corinthians 7, it says, but I want you to be without care because he who is unmarried cares about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he who is married cares about the things of the world, how he may please his wife. And I want to stop right there. 
before I was married, I say this a lot, but when I turned my back on the world, I turned my back on the world, and I would honestly go to a sanctuary and pray three to five hours a day because I didn't have anything else to do. I turned my back on every secular activity I did because I wanted to be close to God. Now, sometimes if I would like to do that, you know, the Bible says you care about the things of the world. Hey, may it please your wife, Joe, look at the yard. Needs mowing. Gotcha. I go mow. I got a house. I have a wife. I have kids and things like that. But you know where my strength comes from? It comes from obedience from God, and it comes from that foundation that I set. When I was, when I was not married, I set myself apart for the things of the Lord. Right now is a time in your life when you should be setting yourself apart. If it's 30 minutes, if it's an hour a day, if it's a few hours a week, how many times do you see people on Facebook say, Man, I'm bored. I wish somebody would call me. Watch this. I'm going to teach you something on this. You find the people that constantly put that and you look at their life. They're not serving God. There's this one cat I called today and I'm like, Bro, it used to be God this, God this. I love Jesus. Jesus. And all on Facebook. And now all it is is country music videos you're posting on there and you're always like, Hook me up. Text me somebody. Let's do something. I said, Bro, do you even know where the house of the Lord is at? He goes, totally backslid. I said, I know. I, under, I, I can read that on Facebook. And, and the thing, you know what he said? I just, I'm not set apart to the things of the Lord anymore. We're going to go on. It says, there is a difference between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cares about the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. Now, if somebody's going to be holy in the body and spirit, you know what that means? No fornication. You got that? And then it goes on to say, but she who is married cares about the things of the Lord, how she may please her husband. And this I say for your own profit, not that I may put a leash on you, but for what is proper, that you may serve the Lord without distractions. And this is what he was saying. I'm saying I'm teaching you this for your benefit, not, not mine. I'm teaching you for your, this benefit, that when, you should, when you're single, serve the Lord with everything you have. What he, the writer was saying right here is I'm not putting this on you, I'm saying that you need to serve the Lord without any distractions until the day that you get married. And you know, this is the saddest thing that I see a lot of young girls, a lot of men do this. Men, man up next week. This week, it's about the ladies. There's a lot of girls that do this. They got to have a boyfriend. You ever notice that? Got to have a boyfriend. And it's so funny, Facebook, it's demonic sometimes. But it's like, you know, so-and-so is single, and then I'm thinking, okay, give her four days and it's like so and so is in a relationship give her four days so and so is single two hours and you know and it's just it's just constant and you, you know why would you do that why would you create so ties why would you get distracted okay when you first start, start going out with somebody what do you do you give them all of your time your heart your energy hopefully not your body and then all of a sudden you break up with them and you're hurt you go to Pastor Joe and Autumn's house counseling we love you rehabilitation pray over you you're strong you go back out you go out with somebody mess up again and it's just a, like a cycling process and here's the thing can I teach you ladies something y'all ready for this that is not attractive to guys at all zero if you're always having a boyfriend guys do not like that now here's the thing this is how guys are okay if you didn't know this the type of girls that guys date are not the type of girls guys want to marry. Back when, when I was young, I remember praying this. Silly, I know. But I was hanging out, and I was praying one day. I actually prayed one day when I was younger. I was like, hey, God, look. Um, I, I didn't have a good relationship with him. I said, I got an idea. I'm kind of doing my thing right now. I said, but that girl right there, when I get ready to get married, yeah, you know, that'd be a, that'd be a good one. But the thing was, I didn't want to date her, right? You know, because she was a you know, good girl and all this. That's not the kind of girls you want to date. So when you're going out with all of these guys, man, it, I hate to say it like this, but it just makes you look like you're hurt, you're wounded, you're cheap. And the thing is, when somebody's looking for a wife, you know what they're looking for? Okay, this is my wife. This is the mother of my children. Am I looking for somebody who's spiritually weak? No, no, no. I want to find somebody who's spiritually strong. I want somebody who has a standard. I want to have somebody that is submitted to the Lord. And I remember I asked Autumn one that this, I said, you know, what, what's in your heart? I mean, what do you love? She said, I love God more than anything in this world, and, and I'll never love you more than God. I'm like, you're the one. That's what I was looking for. 
And you know, my mom told me at a very young age, she said, Joe, you should never love a woman more than God. God is your all. He is your everything. And you know, it's sad, but a lot of times a girl will even say this to a guy, I, I love you more than God. Check, please. Hit the door, brother. That's not the one you want raising your kids. You want the girl to raise your kids or the ones who are set apart to the things of the Lord. I mean, that are serious with God. And I, when I saw my wife and I got to know her, she was the most phenomenal person I've ever met. And next Friday is our 11th anniversary. She is still the most phenomenal person I've ever met met in my life and I didn't even know a mom could be as good as a mom and I got a great mom my wife is just, is just amazing it all comes from being set apart and you know guys you're going to be telling some people today I've got the best wife in the world because I waited on the one that God had for me and ladies I promise you this there's a bunch of young guys out there I was talking to some guys in the gym one day and these were Christians and I said you know you think there's a lot of good Christian girls out there they're like, not really. I wish there was. You know, these girls that are professing Christ, you know, they're, they're kind of easy and they're just not really submitted to the things of the, the Lord. And, and they said, but you know, catch this. If there were more girls that set a standard right here, I think we would set a standard higher. And I, and I said, well, why don't you just do it anyway? Why don't you man up? And they said, well, we don't have to. And all of a sudden I started thinking about that. And I thought, first of all, that makes no sense whatsoever. But then what these guys were saying is, is to get a, a good girl, they didn't think they had to act like that. Ladies, I'm telling you, and I'm going to say just the opposite to the men next week, set a standard and live it. Guys, there are, there are some guys that they look at some girls and they're just in awe of how they're living their spiritual life. When I was single, there was three girls in town, four girls that all the guys talked about, but they were all scared to ask out. And it was so funny because these guys would, you know, talk about, oh, Autumn and, and Sonia and, um, Lord, I forget, you know, Steve Sexton from Brook Hill, his wife. And, and Holly was Haltham, now it's Williamson. All these guys were scared to ask them out. And, you know, it took somebody that said, you know, I'm not intimidated that my wife's spiritual walk is that strong. And I promise you this, guys, my wife challenges me a lot. And, you know, for me to be the spiritual head of the house, my, my wife, her standard's here. I mean, she reads and prays and walks around our house. And if any one of our kids ever gets sick, we get anointing oil, walk in that room. My, my house has streaks all over the wall from anointing oil. Over all of our door frames, there are scriptures written. There are scriptures written in the paint. We'll write on the wall and paint over it. You know, and she's always walking around the house. And I'm just thinking, yeah, that's my wife right there. And, you know, the, the best thing about it, is when you get a woman like that, you got to be a man that has a standard. So you need to man up, guys. And girls, I promise you, there are men out there. Never, never cheapen yourself. Never step down. And you know, I hear a lot of people say this. There's a lot of girls that are always talking about going to the gym, always talking about getting their fitness on, always doing this. You never see anybody post on Facebook, man, i just been in the prayer room for two hours speaking to Jesus, having a great time, watching the Joyce Myers DVD marathon, just a big old series, just, you know, watching T.D. Jakes, listening to the Ramp podcast. You don't hear people say that stuff. It's always physical stuff, physical stuff, physical stuff. Ladies, when guys are ready to get married, physical is good. They want your spiritual life to be up here. Because as guys get older, you know what they think about? Their kids. What is the lady? Because women raise the kids more than men. And they're looking for somebody that's going to hold a standard to raise their kids because the moms have more influence on the children than the men do.